Good evening. Welcome to our adult Bible study on this first day of July 2020. Thank you for being a part of our Bible study tonight. Last week we were in Isaiah chapters 40 through 48. I know that was a lot of information to cover all at once, but I hope you were able to uh, catch up with all your reading uh, for that. Tonight we're going to do the uh, prophecies of Israel's deliverer. Chapters 49 through 57. Uh, some of these chapters are some of my favorite in Scripture. Uh, we'll jump right in. Um, I, I did want to again mention uh, chapters 1 through 39 in Isaiah are man's need for a Savior. And chapters 40 through 66 was God's provision of salvation. Uh, we would not be saved today if it was not for God allowing the Holy Spirit to knock on our heart's door. So as we look at these lessons uh, tonight, we're, we're talking about Israel's deliverer, the Messiah. And we know that to be Jesus Christ. Uh, we uh, know of his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, we know of his crucifixion. So uh, we are... Seeing this from Isaiah's eyes, which was written uh, several months in uh, months, several years uh, prior to Jesus Christ actually coming to this earth, uh, over two hundred years prior. So uh, we know that um, this is an amazing thing that God was working through Isaiah to show him things that were going to come. Uh, very far uh, down the road. And I said 200 years, at least 700 years uh, prior to the birth of Christ. Isaiah was prophesying uh, this information. So uh, in Isaiah chapter 49, we're going to hit or miss as we go through here. I'm going to not read every single verse. It would take us a couple of days to get through here. Uh, but I am going to try to read a few verses here and there. In Isaiah chapter 49, this is the Messiah's mission. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. Uh, people from far. Um, this message was not just to the Jews. This message was to us today. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And that's Jesus. This is referring to Jesus Christ. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. Uh, Jesus is the word of God. John tells us the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Bible says that the word of God cuts uh, to the various sundry of the joints and marrow. Uh, it's a sharp two-edged sword. So Christ is being described here uh, by Isaiah, the uh, coming Messiah. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. Uh, Jesus Christ was trained by God himself, um, and he was God in the flesh. Uh, he was fully man, but he was also fully God. Verse 3 says, And said unto, unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. Now, if you looked at Christ's life uh, at th through his death on the cross, you would think that uh, it was for nothing. Uh, you would think that uh, God had wasted his time. Uh, on Jesus Christ, but that was far from the truth. So much more was going to happen following his resurrection um, and the uh, spread of the gospel since then, now for almost 2,000 years. Verse 5 says, And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. I want you to look at that. Uh, I give you to be a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Now, I want you to understand 
the disciples expected Jesus to establish an earthly kingdom. And a lot of people thought the Messiah, when he come, would establish an earthly kingdom. Is it a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel? They were expecting an earthly king. Jesus was going to go much further than that through his, his death, burial, and resurrection to be a light to the Gentiles and to the entire world. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Uh, God said, Behold, this is my uh, beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That means everybody, kings, princes, uh, presidents, politicians, everybody will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Verse 8 says, Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Uh, through Jesus Christ, he's brought salvation to the entire world. Uh, the, mission, the, the mission of the Messiah was to restore Israel. They thought it was going to be when he was here uh, on the earth, but it is a time yet to come in the future uh, that Jesus Christ is going to restore uh, fully Israel uh, and the nations will flow uh, into Jerusalem again. Uh, to skip down to chapter 50, Isaiah chapter 50, uh, is talking about the Messiah's obedience. Now, in order to bring salvation, uh, the Messiah had to be obedient to God because God's plan was the Messiah would shed his blood for the remission of sins um, and become the sacrificial lamb. Uh, he would be uh, uh, meek before his sharers, and he would not uh, offer up any type of resistance uh, to uh, those that uh, were going to destroy him. So the Messiah was going to be obedient. Look at verse 5. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Uh, Jesus did not refuse uh, to do what God had asked him to do. Uh, if you read verses 6 through 9, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they shall all wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Verse 10 says, Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Uh, Christ was obedient to God in order to uh, assure us salvation, to shed his blood for our sins. If we will trust in him, we don't have to walk in darkness. We don't have to be afraid. Uh, we don't have to uh, fear what is yet to come because God has paid the price for us. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks that you have kindled. This 
shall ye have of mine hand, ye shall lie down in sorrow. Uh, folks, I can't walk by my uh, own uh, doings. I have to have the Lord Jesus Christ to help me. If I try to do it on my own, I am not going to make it. Uh, I must be obedient to God just as Jesus was obedient to God and do the things that God would have me to do just like Jesus did the things that God would have him to do. Going on down into chapter 51, uh, the Messiah's encouragement to Israel. Uh, hearken unto me. You're going to see this several times in this particular uh, passage. Verse 1, hearken unto me. Verse 4, hearken unto me. Verse 7, hearken unto me. Uh, it's very important that we listen to God. Do the things that God would have us to do. Down in verse 17, it says, awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem. Uh, we, we need to be paying attention to God. Uh, we need to be paying attention to the things going on in the world around us. We need to see that God is at work and that we need to join him where he is and be what he would have us to be. Uh, there is encouragement if we will hearken and if we will listen and do the things that God would have us to do. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn. And to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. We need to look to God. Uh, God is our creator. God is the one that placed us here and put us in motion. Uh, we, we need to acknowledge God. Uh, so the encouragement from God is to obey him. Uh, to follow Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Accept him. Repent of our sins. Turn ourselves to him and be what he would have us to be. Uh, that is the encouragement of the Messiah. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. Where will my comfort come from? It will come from God. Where will my peace come from? God. Where will my joy come from? God. Uh, how can I make a melody in my heart? God. Uh, it's through God that I will have all of these things. And I need to know that. I need to live that. Verse 4 says, Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest uh, for a light of the people. Jesus said that he was the light of the world. Uh, in Matthew it says, Don't take your light or your candle and put it under a bushel, uh, but rather put it upon a candlestick that it will light the way for others. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. Uh, Jesus is our light, and we need to shine that light to the world around us. Verse 7 says, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their reviling. Uh, we, need, we need to highlight that and look at that. Uh, the righteous are to be persecuted. The righteous are to be treated horribly. Uh, those that fear God in the end times uh, will be uh, persecuted. And we need to know that. That keeps coming up in everything that we look at. And uh, I, I feel so passionate about that right now. Um, that we need to be prepared uh, for what is yet to come. Uh, prepared to serve God no matter what. Uh, and to be what he would have us to be. Verse 11 says, Therefore... The redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Folks, there's a day of rest coming for the people of God. Uh, that was part of the Sunday school lesson uh, for the adults uh, this past Sunday. There is a rest for the people of God. There is a rest when God uh, executes his wrath upon the wicked. And all of this is settled and done. We have heaven to look forward to. Uh, the Jews uh, have a uh, to look forward to a restored Israel with Jesus on the throne. Uh, I don't understand all the details. I don't understand all the timing. Uh, but I know that God has made promises that he will keep. Uh, and if you and I will trust him, uh, and not our own self, but if we'll trust in him, uh, he will take care of us and provide the things that we need. Uh, let's jump into chapter 52. 
52 uh, continues this message of awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on the beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Uh, there's a time coming when God is going to again restore Israel, the city of Jerusalem. Uh, he himself will be on the throne uh, and and there will no unclean or uncircumcised uh, come into that city. Uh, now, when you think about heaven, um, nothing is going to heaven except that that has accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior. So no person will enter into heaven that is not... Uh, a Christian that has not accepted Jesus Christ, has not confessed their sins to him and had their sins covered by the blood of Jesus. So you and I must confess our sin. We must accept Christ as personal Savior. Uh, his blood will then be applied to us. We'll give, be given a garment of pure white, uh, place a white stone in our hand with a new name written, uh, and we'll make heaven our home. And never again will we have to worry about God's judgment. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Oh, looky there. Redeemed without money. Uh, it doesn't cost us a dime uh, for salvation. It doesn't cost us a dime to go to heaven. Uh, all we have to do is accept Christ as our personal Savior. He's already paid our debt. And uh, we just accept uh, his salvation and we make heaven our home. Verse 4 says, For thus saith the Lord God, My people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? Uh, they that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Uh, God said there's a time coming when uh, everybody is going to know him. Uh, right now, uh, I, I feel like God's name is continually, every day, blasphemed in the world in which we live. Um, as I've said earlier, the Bible is very clear. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. May not confess it here on this earth, but when you stand before God in heaven, uh, you will see and you will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, there is no doubt of that. Uh, that is a reality and a truth, uh, and we need to believe it and be prepared for it. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Uh, folks, it's our, our job to proclaim the truth of the gospel. It's our, God, our job uh, to tell people uh, about God and what God has in store uh, for them. It's our job to publish salvation. Now, Jesus Christ came and brought that salvation. He came and preached uh, the gospels. Uh, he came and uh, uh, did the things that the Father had asked him to do. He uh, accomplished those things. Now it's left up to you and I uh, to publish uh, what he did, to speak it, to teach it, to live it, and to do the things that God would have us uh, to do. So very, very, very uh, important. Verse 53, I mean chapter 53. Wow, an amazing chapter. I love, 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 love this chapter. Uh, and uh, after I saw the passion of the Christ, I came back and I read this chapter uh, and just wept uh, because the, the passion of the Christ just so uh, explains what uh, we see here in this chapter. Uh, Twelve verses, but wow, what a potent and powerful chapter. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the Lord is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. 
Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall uh, see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul into death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Every verse in this particular chapter speaks of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, his trial, uh, the torture that he would receive, uh, and it speaks of the salvation that he would provide for each and every one of us. Uh, look at verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Look, I, Jesus didn't do anything. He was sinless. He was the perfect sacrificial lamb. Not a bone broken, no disease, not a blemish anywhere. Yet he was crucified Killed upon the cross of Calvary. His blood was shed uh, for you and I so that we could make heaven our home. He bore that. He did that. He took upon himself to do those things for us. And looky right here. He opened not his mouth. He did not um, refuse to be what God wanted him to be. Um, at any point in time, he could have stopped the process. At any point in time, he could have said, Hey, look, I'm, I'm not going through this. Uh, I'm not going to do this. Uh, I'm just not going there. Uh, but he didn't. He completed the task. Uh, he did what God would have him to do. And he did it so you and I could go to heaven. Uh, this is an amazing chapter. Uh, you need to read this chapter often. Uh, to understand the, the salvation of God. Uh, there's uh, so much prophecy uh, in this particular chapter. Um, he, he made his grave with the wicked. He, he was killed with two um, uh, sinners uh, and with the rich in his death. After death, he was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, who was a rich man, uh, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Uh, you know, it pleased the Lord to place upon Jesus my sins. It should please me to do what God would have me to do and to be all that I can be in his kingdom. Uh, I should be willing to uh, sacrifice my time, my energy to serving God and being what God would have me to be. I should not do it grudgingly. I should not murmur and I should not growl. Uh, I should be thankful that God loved me enough to send his son to die on the cross for my sins uh, so that I could make heaven my home. Uh, jumping on, uh, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Uh, none other than Jesus Christ, the Messiah, uh, the Holy One of Israel. Uh, he became the husband. Uh, now I want you to think about that. For thy maker is thine husband. Who is the church? The bride 
of Christ, who is our husband, Jesus Christ. Uh, in his name is uh, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth. When thou wast refused, saith thy God, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Uh, there was a period of time of judgment uh, that passed upon Israel uh, following the death of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jerusalem was destroyed in A.D. 70 by the Romans. Uh, it was not until 1948 uh, that Israel became a nation again. Uh, almost 2,000 years later. So uh, God is keeping his promise. Now, it's been a moment since the crucifixion. Uh, Israel has been forsaken for many years, uh, but it is not forever. And I promise you that no matter what you're going through, uh, it may seem that God has forsaken you. Uh, but I promise you it will be for a moment, and then God will bring his mercy and his grace uh, and will deliver you. So hang in there. Don't let this world get you down. The problems we see going on in the world right now, don't let it destroy you. Uh, the the uh, end of time approaching, don't let it uh, worry you to death. Uh, God will provide a way for his children. And we need to know that. Verse 9 says, For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, uh, that has mercy on thee. Uh, God has promised restoration. And I, I tell you, it's coming. Uh, to the nation of Israel, uh, and to his people that will call on his name. Uh, if you and I are calling on the name of the Lord, uh, we shall be saved. Verse 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Here's a huge promise. Uh, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Uh, that's a promise from God. Uh, you know, it looks like right now the wicked are prospering. It looks like the enemy is gaining ground. Uh, but you know, you, you watch uh, the science fiction movies where the dark cloud of evil uh, begins to cover uh, the earth. And because of acts of goodness and kindness, uh, that evil is destroyed and pushed back. Uh, because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, Satan will not win. He may be allowed a period of time to engulf the earth in a very dark cloud of evil, uh, but I promise you, light will come shining through. Uh, and Jesus Christ, riding on that white horse uh, with legions of uh, saints following him, uh, will conquer and destroy Satan. Uh, with the spoken word. So uh, we can be confident in that. Trust in the Lord uh, and do the things that God would have us to do. We'll make it through to the end. Uh, Messiah's invitation to the world. Another great chapter. Isaiah chapter 55. Uh, awesome chapter. Ho, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye by and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. Uh, I said before it was free as we looked in a previous chapter. Um, it doesn't cost you anything uh, to accept Christ as your personal Savior. No money is involved. Uh, all you have to have is a thirst. Uh, if you're thirsty, uh, God will provide what you need to drink. Come to the waters. Uh, Jesus is that water. He told the woman at the well, he said, uh, if you had asked me, I would give you uh, uh, water to drink, and you will never thirst again. Uh, she said uh, she wanted that water. Jesus is that water. So if we want nourishment for our soul uh, that will guide us into the future uh, and, and take us until the time that we see Christ split the eastern skies, uh, we need to hunger and thirst after righteousness, after God. Read his word, study his word, let it take root in our hearts, uh, let it comfort us uh, in the days and weeks uh, that are yet to come. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, 
and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Uh, Jesus said, uh, if you eat of this body, uh, he was talking about uh, uh, his body being that manna which come down from heaven, uh, that bread that gives life and sustains. Uh, Jesus is the bread of life. We need to uh, drink from his water and eat from his bread uh, and will live forever. Not here in this earth. This earth is not going to last forever. Uh, a lot of scientists think it is, but it's not going to last forever. When Jesus splits the eastern skies, the Bible says very plainly, this earth will be destroyed uh, and there will be a new heaven. Uh, you and I will get to make that place our home for heaven, forever. And we call that heaven. Verse 3 says, Incline your ear and come unto me. Here in your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Uh, folks, we had the Abrahamic covenant. We had the Davidic covenant, the Noahic covenant, the Abrahamic, the Adamic covenant, the Edenic covenant. Uh, but remember, the new covenant was the last covenant that God made with man. And that is if I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and ask him to forgive me of my sins, God has promised me a home in heaven. Uh, and I uh, then need to be what God would have me to be. Uh, I can lose my salvation. Don't misunderstand. I do not think that uh, once saved, always saved, and I never will. Uh, but I do believe that once we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, as long as we walk in his footsteps, Satan cannot pull us away from God. Verse 4 says, Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. That's the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Uh, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. Uh, the Gentiles, all of us, and nations that need not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Again, Jesus died for the whole world, not just the Jews, uh, not just Israel, but for the entire world, everybody. Uh, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Folks, time is drawing near. Um, the, the word of God is being silenced everywhere we turn. Uh, social media is banning uh, certain words from being used. Uh, they're filtering the content of uh, everything that is said or done on their page. And if it's considered offensive, it is removed. Uh, so there's a time coming when you may not be able to hear about the Lord. Uh, there's a time coming when you may not be able to read a Bible. Uh, there's a time coming when there may not be a preacher. There may not be a church. Uh, what are you going to do during that period of time? How are you going to get saved? How are you going to grow in your faith? Uh, I'm telling you, you need to call upon the Lord while he may be found, while he is near uh, right now. Uh, if you are not saved, hit your knees and cry out to God and ask him to forgive you of your sins. Christian, if you're living backslidden, uh, separate from God, you're cold, you're indifferent, hit your knees, cry out to God, ask him to forgive you of sin. Uh, we need to be right with the Lord, ready to make heaven our home. Uh, there, there is no uh, time more urgent than now uh, for us to be ready to meet the Lord. Uh, it, it is important. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Uh, we need to ask God to forgive us. Uh, if we're wicked, we need to confess it to God. Uh, turn from our wicked ways. Uh, cry out to God. Uh, our thoughts are our biggest enemy. Uh, and the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Uh, let's let's think on heavenly things. Let's think on God, uh, the the good things, uh, so that God uh, can pardon us and we can make heaven our home. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways. My ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Uh, folks, I don't presume to understand God's will. Uh, for my life, your life, or anyone else's life. Uh, I don't presume to understand God's will for Waldrop Church. Um, I know he has a plan, and I know he will reveal it to us as we go. 
Uh, but as far as being able to look into the future and know God's plans for me and for the church, I have no idea. But I can look into the book of Revelations and know what God's plan for this world is, and that is total destruction. Uh, God's plan for the Christian is a home in heaven. God's plan for the sinner uh, is eternal punishment and separation in a place called hell. Uh, those things I do know. And I can trust in those things. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Folks, we need to take comfort. We don't have to be... Uh, a theologian to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anytime you share uh, the word of God with anybody else, God will take that word, he will plant it in that heart, and he will help it to accomplish what he wants it to accomplish, and it will prosper. Uh, so I promise you, every word of God uh, that you put into the hearts of somebody else, it will grow. Uh, so plant seeds. Uh, plant good seeds, plant verses of scripture, plant Christian thoughts, Christian ideas, plant Christian worldviews. Uh, those are the things that you and I can do to make the world a better place. Uh, for ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. I love to see in the uh, science fiction uh, children's movies, how uh, the at the end of the story, the hero or the heroine, uh, as they uh, kind of walk out into the field or, or uh, the forest begins to bloom again and the trees uh, 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 bud out suddenly and put out their leaves and their flowers and the grass turns green and all that was dark and wicked is restored to its lush beauty and uh, uh, peacefulness. That's what God can do. God can restore joy. God can restore peace. Uh, God can make to flourish uh, the world around us. That's what I see in, in uh, verses 12 and 13 uh, is the ending of one of these beautiful little science fiction movies where the evil is destroyed uh, and the green grass takes its place again. You watch Lion King at the end uh, when uh, uh, Scar has uh, taken over and there's no food and the trees aren't blooming and there's no grass and everything is just dead. Uh, but this, as soon as Scar is defeated and uh, the kingdom restored, the grass turns green, the animals return, the trees uh, have leaves. It's just a totally different picture. That's what God paints in verses 12 and 13. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Uh, folks, there's restoration coming. Uh, we just need to be ready for it and looking for it. Uh, for it will come. Isaiah chapter 56, Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing evil. Uh, folks, Jesus said, I am the Sabbath. Uh, it's important uh, that you and I trust in Jesus Christ. It's important that he becomes our Holy One. He's important that uh, you and I put him first and foremost in our life. He becomes our rest. And then we do what is right in his eyes. Blessed is the man that doeth this. If I do what God has called me to do, uh, he will bless. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And specifically, Isaiah was talking about the stranger uh, who had joined the children of Israel. Folks, we're that stranger. Uh, we're the Gentiles that have been grafted in. Uh, we can go into the house of prayer, uh, God's house. It's for all people. Uh, I, I, I can't do anything but make this bigger. Um, uh, all 
people. I'm going to make it big enough to uh, go down on the second page, hopefully. All people. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Uh, Jesus is not racist. God is not racist. Uh, the church should not be racist. Uh, not in any shape, form, or fashion. And anybody that would tear down a statue of Jesus Christ uh, saying that Jesus is a racist person, um, I, I, I don't understand it. They're, they're completely deceived by Satan. Uh, and unless they change from their wicked ways, there's no hope for them. Uh, jumping on down into Isaiah chapter 57, we want to read verse 12. I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. Uh, I shall declare thy righteousness and thy works, uh, for they shall not profit thee. When thou criest, let thy uh, companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall be take, shall take them, but he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. Uh, folks, if we'll declare the righteousness of Jesus Christ and his works, uh, it will be uh, uh, very good. Uh, God will uh, allow us to enter into his heaven. He'll allow us to be a part of his kingdom. Uh, if we don't declare, if we don't, we'll be destroyed. Uh, uh, it's just that simple. Verse 19, I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near. Uh, folks, if you and I will draw close to God, no matter who we are, no matter what um, nationality, no matter what race, no matter what country we came from, if we'll cry out to God, God will heal us. God will save us. Uh, God will give us a home in heaven. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Uh, you know, verse 21 uh, in, in this last chapter. Uh, there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Uh, what do we see going on in the world today? Uh, we've got wicked people doing everything they can to find peace. We've got inner cities that are becoming autonomous zones. Uh, thinking that they can self-rule themselves and create a utopia um, apart from our uh, police, uh, military, our social norms. Um, they think that they can create a zone of euphoria, utopia, uh, a zone where uh, anyone can do whatever they want to without rules, without restrictions. But folks, that only leads to chaos. That only leads to Satan taking full control. And folks, in the absence of light, there is only darkness. And there is a very dark darkness. And I'm not talking black and white as in skin color. Uh, I'm talking black and white as in evil versus good. And there is a huge dark cloud brewing within the inner cities in our country and it's spreading throughout our country and if christians do not awaken turn from their wicked ways seek god repent of our sins and cry out to him this wickedness this darkness will totally engulf this country and very easily the entire world uh, folks we're living in a day and age when uh, good deeds are more important than ever before. Uh, if we will seek peace, if we will seek love toward our fellow man, if we will seek the mercies of God, uh, live in a way that is pleasing to him, uh, the darkness can be stayed, but it's only going to be stayed by Jesus Christ himself. Uh, you or I cannot oppose this wickedness. You and I cannot send it back where it came from. Uh, it's going to take the hand of Almighty God. And I encourage you now, uh, pray. Pray often. Uh, pray for God's mercy. Pray for God's deliverance. Uh, pray for our country, our leaders, uh, our police, our military, and our first responders. Uh, folks, we need to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Uh, pray that God's will be done. 
Uh, pray that God pour out his mercy. Uh, pray that uh, the, the people of this earth will accept Jesus Christ uh, as their Messiah. Uh, I want to take you back to the top. Next week we'll be looking at the prophecies of Israel's glorious future. Uh, chapters 58 through 66. So I encourage you to read those chapters uh, for next week. And we will try to have our lesson posted for you. I hope you have a great week. i see you Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Um, would let you know that we've been having trouble um, with our Sunday school lessons. We never got them to post this past Sunday. Uh, we don't know what happened. Um, on our administrative page, they're there. But you can't see them. Uh, nobody else can uh, sign in uh, or can see them on the Facebook page. So we do not know what has happened. Uh, we are investigating other means of bringing Sunday school lessons to you. Hopefully um, this coming Sunday we will simply post a link to YouTube and let you watch your Sunday school lessons on YouTube. So far uh, YouTube has not screened our content, uh, but it does seem that Facebook is now screening our content. So uh, pray. Uh, pray for us that we would do the right things and pray that we are able to continue delivering these lessons to you. Thank you and have a good evening.